Let's say you receive this Excel file every day and each time the date format is not correct and numbers need to be converted to accounting format. Well, one way is to manually select the columns each time and convert them to desired format. So let's do that first. We select column E, which is order date, press and hold control key and select column G for processing date. Press Alt H to access the home tab. From the home tab, click on N to access the date format. And here we'll type SH for short date, click on enter. And you can see the dates have been fixed. We do the same with quantity and price column. So let's select these two columns, Alt H and K for accounting format. And this fixes the formats. Now, this works fine for a few columns, but if there are a lot of columns, this becomes very tedious and painful. A smarter way to do this would be using VBN arrays. So let's check how that can be done. If you do not see the developer tab enabled here, click on file options, go to the customize ribbon tab and make sure that the developer tab is selected right here with a tick button next to it and click on OK and you will start seeing the developer tab here. Press Alt F11 to go into the developer tab. If you already have a personal macro workbook set up, then you can skip this step else you can follow along. Creating a personal macro workbook is very easy. So we have this file open here. It could be any file. We go to developer and we say record macro and make sure to store macro in personal macro workbook. Click on OK and you can do anything here. Strive ABC and let's just click on stop recording. Now we press Alt F11 to go into developer mode. And here you will see VBA project personal.xlsp and you will also see modules here. If you double click on any module, it will open up. So this is the macro it had recorded. If you want to see the path of where this macro workbook is, you can do this in the immediate window. Press enter and it will give you the path of that file as well. Just make sure that when you close the Excel instance, it will ask you that do you want to save the changes you made to personal macro workbook? Make sure to click on save here and that is how your personal macro workbook will be created. Now, once your personal macro workbook has been created, you can either create the macro in your personal macro workbook or you can do it in this macro workbook as long as it's saved as XLSM. So currently our file is saved as XLSM. So let's start creating macro in the same file. So click on insert module and it gives you a new window where you can type your code. We start writing the code with sub, which stands for subroutine and then give it a good name without spaces. VBA will automatically add empty parentheses and an end sub. So let's add a name, let's say fix formatting and as soon as you press enter it will add empty parentheses and you can see n sub as well if you do not see these immediate and local windows you can go to view tab and click on here immediate window and locals window for detailed reading on naming your vba macros i will add a link in the description we will achieve our desired task using vba arrays so let's declare our array or initialize it we do that using dim which stands for dimension and then giving it a good name so let's call it date calls to fix and in parentheses, we will type how many items we will store in the array. So for now, we just need to store two items. So we will say one, two, two, press enter. Let me format this a bit. This will also say as strings. Now we can start adding values to our array. We do that by typing the array name and then parentheses, we give array number. For now, this will be one. Then we put this equal to the value we want it to save in it. So our first column name will be order date. So this will be our first value to store in the array. Let's add it here. We repeat the same step. So we just copy paste this and we change this to two and we change this to processing date. Let me just copy and paste this. It's easier. Now we need to figure out a way to loop through these values. We do that using for loop. Basic structure for for loop in VBA is very simple. We start with typing for and then we put it equal to and then we say from where it will start and to what value it will go to. So we want it to loop through one to two. So it will repeat this code two times. Then we type next I. And this is the basic structure for for loop. We type one to two here because we know that our array has only two values. We will do two iterations of this loop. Here I can be anything, but it's mostly industry standard and good practice when reading your own code or sharing with someone. So let's just use I here. Now we can quickly test that our for loop works by adding a debug.print and then trying to print the array value in each loop. So let's do that. Type debug.print. So anything you want printed to immediate window, we can do that by using debug.print and then we type this columns to fix and the way to access array value will be, we just type round parentheses and then we give i. So the i's value will be whatever the value of the loop is. First loop, it, it will have one and then second loop, it will have two as value. So let's run the code and our immediate window should print these two column names and voila. Means our array is set up correctly and our loop is working. Next, we need to select the columns by name and convert set format. 
we can do this by using match function of Excel. Let's create some space here. To access Excel formulas, we need to type application dot worksheet function. This gives VBA access to Excel functions. So we can use the match function, which we normally use in our Excel formulas. And it will have the same parameters we normally enter in Excel formulas. So the first thing we will give it is what it needs to match, which is the column name. Our column name we saw above is stored in this loop. So let's add this here. Next thing it requires is where to find. We need to find it in first row. So give it rows one through one. And then we will type zero for exact match. Now let's just wrap this inside of debug.print so we can see what column number is being printed. So let's just comment this out. We do that by adding an apostrophe or you can also add the comment block here. So for example, if I uncomment this and do this again, this will do the same thing. Now let's clear the image window and let's run this again. And we can see we have five and seven. So our order date column number is five and our processing date column number is seven, which is correct. Now we need to convert all of this line into a separate function because we will need to keep on repeating it. It's always a good idea to create a separate function. I have already done it here, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. This function takes in column name and returns column number, assuming data is in first row. This is doing the same thing, it's just returning the column number like this function. So let's update our line which prints column number. And instead, I'm just gonna give it column number here and this will go away as well. My bad, let me fix this, okay. So let's just test this again to see and make sure that our function is working correctly. Click run and we still have five and seven, which means our function is working correctly. Next, we use columns property to select the column. So I'm going to remove debug.print. We don't need to use this anymore. Now let's start doing the actual code. So we wrap this inside of columns property of VBA. Wrap this inside and say select. Okay, I think we are missing one parenthesis which should be here. Okay, this is good. And you can see it has now capitalized and data formatting as well. So if you sometimes see that it is appearing in red or it's not capitalizing properly, it means you have some syntax error in there. Now that our relevant columns are selected in each loop, we need to change their format. We do that using number format property and assign a desired format. So next we will do is we will say selection dot number format. And here we will give M D and four Y's, which is for the whole year. Now let's run it and see if our code works properly. So I'm just going to convert all of this back to general format, run our macro to see if it works properly and voila, our date columns have been fixed. Now let's fix our quantity and price column as well and convert them to accounting format. We can either copy and paste this whole code block and create a separate one and modify this to quantity and this to price or we can modify the same array and try to incorporate these two columns within the same array. Feel free to play around with trying to copy and paste but for the sake of this video, we will modify our existing array. First thing, let's modify array name to a bit generic. Let's copy the array name. Control H to access the find replace box. In find what, we will say days columns to fix and in replace with, we will say columns to fix. This is the new array name we need, which is a bit generic. Click on replace all. It says five replacements were made, which is good. Click on OK. Now we need to modify our array and add two more values to it. So change from two to four as array size. And I'm just going to copy and paste these two and modify these. So first thing we need, this is three, this is four, and now the column names. Now we need to update our for loop as well. So we can either change this two to four, or we can replace this two with U bound function of VBA, which determines the size of array dynamically, which in our case will be four, and it will be continuously dynamically updated each time, which is what we need. Let's replace this with U bound. U bound works by just giving it the array name. Our array name is columns to fix, close this. This solves our one problem of manually updating the loop. We now also need an if else to this loop. The structure of if else is very simple. I'm just going to add it here. So let's say if this is just for understanding purpose. Let's say if X, Y, Z, then else and if. So this is a very basic structure of if else. Let's just now add it here. So first we need to test is if the column name in each iteration is equal to order date or columns to fix equals processing date. If that is true, then we need to convert them to date format. If that's not true, we will add an else here. I'm just going to do a bit formatting. So move this inside. This will come back out and let's just add an end if as well to complete the if else loop. Now let's just for testing purpose, we add a debug dot print here. So we are able to tell if our if else is working properly. I'm just going to convert this back to general format, run the loop. So we can see it has fix the date columns and for two columns, it says not date column. Great. Now let's just copy and paste the code block above and modify the number format to convert these to accounting formats. So I'm going to copy and paste this. Since this is all dynamic, we can just copy and paste this. We will only modify this to say selection style equals comma. 
so I'm once again going to convert this to general format and after this macro is run this should be converted to date format and these two should be in accounting format column so let's run it and voila we have these two in accounting date formats and this is in a date format this macro can be expanded as needed if you have further columns here you can just continue to expand the if else and this loop and this should continue to i hope you like the content if you did consider liking and subscribing and i'll see you next time